This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. A doubleheader, legendary college football defensive coordinator Mickey Andrews. And later in the broadcast, we talk about the personal side of college football with Mickey's wife, Diane Andrews, on this edition of Conversations. Looking back over the years, it would be hard to imagine another assistant college coach that commanded more of a presence on the sideline than FSU's Mickey Andrews. After 26 years with Florida State, Andrews retired in 2009. His body of work is quite impressive. Two national championships and 80 players who made it to the National Football League, including superstars Deion Sanders and Derek Brooks. His intensity was only matched by that of his players. A Mickey Andrews coach defense was hard hitting and lightning fast. The awards and accolades are many. Andrews was the first ever winner of the Frank Broyles Award, which recognizes the top assistant coaches in the game. But what's most impressive is the love and respect his players still have for him. Players say lessons learned from Andrews extend far beyond the football field. Coach Mickey Andrews, welcome to Conversations. Thank you very much, Jeff. Good to be here. You had a tremendous career at Florida State. You've retired. What are you doing in retirement? Well, actually, I'm getting to do things I never had time to do before. Uh, <clears throat> Diane and I uh, went through 45 years of coaching. And, of course, most of that time uh, meant that you were at the office or off recruiting rather than being home with the family. But... Uh, We've gotten to do a lot of traveling, uh, chance to see our family, visit with them more, uh, get out, do some traveling. Uh, we were over in Israel during the season last year, missed a couple of games, but uh, started playing a little bit of golf, uh, just doing things that really hadn't had time to do before. You make it to make it to a few of the games, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, we were at the spring game this past Saturday. Uh, really enjoyed getting out there. We had a lot of the players that came back. Uh, Jim Bowie started getting players back. Uh, I think Terrell Buckley was probably the guy in charge, but uh, I don't know, we must have had 75 or so former players come back uh -huh. and getting to visit with them, played golf with some of them on Friday. Uh, just an enjoyable time yeah. being around the guys. One of the things your players always come back, they say, now, you were tough on the football field, but off the field, you were just a, a gentleman, a great guy, and they learned a lot of lessons that they're able to use in their personal lives. What did you teach your guys? Well, first of all, when we, you know, when we started recruiting them and talking about what they wanted to accomplish, what their goals were, and we tried to identify each one of them, and, and, uh, most all of them wanted to go on and play pro football, but uh, the, the main thing they, that you would hear them say is, I want to be all ACC, or I want to be all American. Uh, I want to make it to the pros. And uh, the thing we just tried to emphasize that, you know, not everybody gets a chance to do that. Right. Uh, it takes extra t uh, ordinary talent, extraordinary talent, uh, but it takes a lot of extra effort. Uh, there's a price that you have to pay for success. Uh, in football, uh, you can develop a lot of skills if you'll spend enough time and effort working on it. And uh, The thing that I always would, would tell the guys, uh, if you don't make it, it's going to be two people's fault, either you or me. And I'm going to try not to let it be me. Mm -hmm. Let me back up and talk about your career here for a second. You played football at the mm -hmm. University of Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, kind of take me from your college career to you ended up at Florida State. Well, I did. I played football and baseball, actually. I played two years of baseball. Uh, I was married. Uh, so when I graduated in January, I didn't get to play baseball my senior year. I went on into high school coaching. I was in uh, Birmingham for one year at a high school and then I went to coach Bryant called and asked me did I want to get in was interested in college coaching and I said yes sir and 
he said, well, you need to get in touch with Roy Kidd at Eastern Kentucky University. I, so I did, went up there, interviewed, got the job, and uh, stayed there a year. And uh, then, our, of course, our son was born while we were in Birmingham. And uh, while Diane was in Birmingham, I was actually in <laughs> Eastern Kentucky. Uh, but that's another story. I won't get into that. Uh, Diane can tell that side of it. <laughs> but then I went to Livingston University, which is West Alabama now. I was there three years as an assistant coach. and uh, Then I got the head job. And I was a head coach for three years, and then the athletic director. Went to University of North Alabama for four years as head football coach and athletic director. And uh, after that, I went to uh, Clemson. Went with Charlie Pell up to Clemson. Right. Uh, was up there as defensive coordinator. Went to Florida for two years with Charlie. A uh, year in uh, USFL out in Arizona. Right. And uh, and then 26 years we were in Tallahassee, so that's that's pretty much been it. And you know when we went there, you never know how long you're going to end up staying at a, at a on a job. Right. And uh, we had a lot of opportunities to leave, but it, it wasn't exactly what we wanted. We had an opportunity to go back to University of Alabama a couple of times, but it wasn't a job that I wanted. Right. right. You know, I wanted a head job. I, didn't, I, I wasn't going just to be the assistant. Right. And so I said, I got the best job in the country at Florida State. And uh, plus we were, you know, Coach Biden kept telling me, he said, when I retire, I want you to be the head coach here. I want you to take my place. I just didn't realize that, <laughs> that I was going to be too old to be the head coach when he got through coaching. <laughs> and uh, actually, I re ended up retiring before he did. That's right, yeah. But uh, that's kind of uh, what went on. And we were very blessed to, to have been in Florida you know, Tallahassee all those years. Were you ever tempted by the National Football League? Yes, I had two, two opportunities actually to go and Jeff Fisher tried to get me to come up there with the Titans a few years ago and I really liked Jeff and, and I almost ended up taking that job. But, uh, you know, I think when, when you got to fit a certain job, you know, and that was a thing about uh, whether you're an assistant coach or a head coach. I think you got to really fit in. And I wasn't sure. Uh, Mike Heimdinger was there. He was on our staff at Florida when I was down there, and he was the uh, offensive coordinator. But when I went in the room to, with the defensive staff, I just didn't get the feeling that I needed. Yeah. You know. Uh, I never have gotten up and gone to work. Right. I never looked at it like work. Right. But I asked one of the coaches, how much input will I have in what we do? And uh, he said, not not a whole lot. And uh, I said, uh, well, I need to think about that a little bit because, you know, at Florida State, Coach Bowden, you know, he primarily was an offensive coach. And, and he told me when I interviewed for the job, you know, I'm going to do things a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to take chances on offense that's going to really put the defense in a bind sometimes. And he said, if you don't think you can do that, you don't need to come. And I said, Coach, all I want is an opportunity to help us build a great program. And he said, well, you'll get that. And, and that's the way it was there. Yeah. Uh, Coach Biden was one of those unique guys, Jeff, that, you know, a lot of people want to get hired uh, are not given the freedom and the liberties to, you know, to make your own choices and kind of put your stamp on it, whatever. Uh, but Coach Biden had a unique gift that once he gave you your job and told you what to do, he didn't micromanage and, and, and look over your shoulder all the time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when he had something that, you know, he was concerned about a little bit, I know I've been in this office a couple of times where he would say, you know, uh, have you thought about looking at this? You know, he had mentioned something, whatever. And that was his way, you know. And if you didn't do it, uh, it wasn't going to bother him because I'm not so sure sometimes you didn't do it just to see if you really were sold on what you were doing. Right. Uh, but anyway, it, it, uh, it was a great 
stay at Florida State. We had a great time. Tell me about the, the 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 run you guys had in the late 1990s. I mean, in that 97, 98, 99, and I mean, I think back to that national championship game where Michael Vick was just boy. But yeah. your your defense was able to corral him and go on to win a national championship. Find me. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't I don't know that there will be another occasion. What no one had ever do, dominated uh, a decade like like we were able to do. The, I think it was 14 times that we finished in the top four in the country. Won 14 straight years. We went uh, 10 wins or more a year. I don't know how many bowl games in a row that we'd won, but uh, I think it's I think going to be very, very difficult to ever be repeated because of the scholarship limitations that exist now. Mm. Uh, I think what it's done is made all of college football better because uh, it gave schools like uh, South Florida, Central Florida, uh, Southern Mississippi, Troy. Uh, you, you better be careful when you play these people. They can sneak up and bite you. They can sneak up and bite you. Uh, and we found that, we found that out. Uh, you know, for a while we were playing, <clears throat> we'd play My University of Miami on a Monday night and it was bad enough if you were home, but if you were down there, you didn't get back home till four in the morning. And then you had to play another game that Saturday. Football wasn't meant to be played. It's not like basketball or baseball where you can line back up and play again. And uh, I'm telling you, we had our hands full of, a few times with, with Troy and, and, and uh, who was it, Jacksonville State. You know, uh, these programs have, have been able to get better athletes because they've limited the number of athletes that you can bring in a year and so like your 95 total uh, but it's probably was good for overall for college football it's getting a little bit short on time as you go through your retirement here what's kind of the next step in your life what do you what do you want to do what do you want to accomplish well I guess just be me a little bit uh, you know being in college coaching uh, it's a very demanding profession. Uh, it uh, it requires a lot of time away from home. Uh, not just during the season, uh, but recruiting. You, you do the recruiting in, during the season. Then you get into, you know, your for your signing period when you're out going, and then you did it again in the spring. Uh, and all of that time that that I was unable to be with my family, uh, you know, now I, I get to do it. Right. Uh, Diane and I have done more things probably in the last year than maybe we were able to do in 15, 20 years prior to that. I've been able to go to Montgomery and see my mother more in this past year than maybe five, 10 years prior to that. Uh, I've been able to do a lot of hunting and fishing with my grandsons and still look forward to that uh, but I don't know I think Diane probably uh, you know back during the fall you'd have ball games on the weekend or we were my two grandsons we were all fishing right. hunting or whatever but from Monday to Friday got to be pretty long sometimes <laughs> and I could see that Diane was needing a break here so I took up golf again okay. and uh, it, that was quite a quite a thing after that number of years not really playing golf. But old Kenny Knox helped me out quite a bit. Took some lessons from him and and got some people that are patient enough to let me get my frustrations out. When I, <laughs> you know, I always had a hard time in football. Uh, mistakes just just drive me crazy. I don't know what it is. I've always been like that personally. You know, when I was playing ball and. Uh, and I didn't like to see people make mistakes because mistakes get you beat. Uh -huh. uh, I don't lose very well. And uh, but now uh, I'm having to to rely and, and take a little ribbon from other people <laughs> when when they go play golf with me. But we're having a good time. Coach Mickey Andrews, it's been a pleasure. Appreciate you spending some well, time you, with Jeff. us. Good Wish you all here. the best of luck in retirement. Good luck on that golf game. Thank you very much. <laughs> coach Mickey Andrews. Now, coming up next, the lady who gave Coach Andrews the real home field advantage. 
his wife for nearly 50 years. Diane Andrews joins us next on Conversations. For nearly 50 years of marriage, she's been the support system that made it possible for Coach Mickey Andrews to be big-time college football coach Mickey Andrews. Diane Andrews joins us for this edition of Conversations. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Tell me what it's like being married to a college football coach. Um, well, I'm just finding out. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, for the last, well, we married while he was playing ball at Alabama. And Coach Bryant moved him into the dorm. So I lived alone for the first year. Uh, and after that, he started coaching. And so for all of the time, he maybe ate at home 10 times a year yeah. while he coached. So for about a little over a year now, I've experienced that. <laughs> and uh, the jury's still out. <laughs> <laughs> you got to we'll make see. him prove himself. We'll huh? see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> you know, one would think that it must be a glamorous type situation. But as we've talked off camera, there's a lot of hard work and, 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 and an awful lot of dedication, not just on the coach's part. But, but I mean, somebody's got to run the family. That fell to Absolutely. you, right? Absolutely. It does. Yeah. It does. Uh, it's a really difficult life. I used to tell my doctor the only difference in the he and Mickey and the hours, or the only thing is the money. That's the only <laughs> difference because you're on call yeah. 24 hours a day. The phone would ring, uh, you know, and he was off. He was gone. But he would usually go to work about 6.30 in the morning, come home at 11 at night. Yeah. And this was seven days a week. He would, that was during football season. As soon as that was over, he would recruit. So then he was on the road. He was gone for weeks. Come in on the weekend, we would recruit. The players came in. So we recruited all the weekend. Then he'd go back out again. That was till February. He then went in the spring, uh, off season. Then he got up at four in the morning and left. So we had June. <laughs> that was the only time. And most times after the kids were older, I just got him out of the country. <laughs> we went away, went and him. I got him on a boat, <laughs> you know, because that was about the only time we had was June. Speaking of recruiting, now you went on a couple of recruiting trips, didn't you? T I did. Tell me about Didn't you have a kind of a unique recruiting trip over in South Alabama? I did, Robertsdale. There was a time, well, now a wife, from what I understand, is considered a visit. If, I, if Mickey and I went into a home, then that's two visits, wow. and you only have so many. So I would go in with him and sort of help size up the family, what was going on. So this particular time, Mickey said, this, this young man is thinking about going to LSU. And, but he's interested in Florida State, so we're going to go on in. We went in. Well, he looked like a Greek god. He was gorgeous. He uh, was a scholar athlete. And I just said, we came out the door. I said, now, Mickey, here's one. This is a good one. So he talked him into it, and he came to Florida State. Well, the first Thanksgiving he was there, Mickey brought him home for Thanksgiving along with some other players because we played Florida right. after Thanksgiving right. on Saturday, and they couldn't go home. So he would bring some home, and he brought him home. He met our daughter, who was also a freshman, and he's now our son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was amazing. He's now a commander in the Navy. He just is back from Bahrain, and we have two beautiful little granddaughters. Oh, and uh, so Mickey would tell all the coaches after that, be careful who you bring in here because they could be your son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ultimate so, recruiting job, absolutely, though. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. He did, we did well. Diane, we did. I know you do a lot of public speaking around. What are you, what are you telling people? Well, uh, for years, we, uh, three other ladies and I, did a coach's wives retreat, and it was for nationwide. And we tried to speak to problems in coaches' wives and husbands' marriages because the divorce rate just, ladies don't want to put up with a lot of the stuff that we right. have put up with all right. these years. And so we would speak to things of the family, mm -hmm. things of, you know, tolerance in this profession, a lot of such things as that. So that's a lot of what I do. Um, it seems that I, I was asked to speak one time at the National Coaches Convention to the women, and I noticed they all asked me a lot of times to speak on stress. 
and I couldn't figure out, you know, why did they do that? Why did they think I'm qualified for that? I have no, you know, no qualifications. And so I, when I would go and speak, and I was speaking on stress, I had a picture blown up of Mickey. I called the Democrat one day, and I said, get me the worst looking picture you can find of him. Talk about and the Tallahassee they, Democrat in the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they blew it up into this gigantic thing, or I did, and it was awful, just an awful picture <laughs> of him. His teeth, it was terrible. And so I, when they'd ask me to speak on stress, and I'd say, well, I guess this qualifies me, and I'd hold his picture up. I said, this is my husband. <laughs> so I, I speak a lot on, you know, how you handle stress. Uh, Mickey and I both speak now in a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. We do uh, coaches' wives and husbands' retreats. We were just at Howie in the Hills a few months ago for FCA. And uh, we do breakout groups, and then we speak. You know, speaking the, of think stress, about that. Speaking of stress, in, in, your, in your judgment, how is the best way to handle stress in a marriage? Um, well, I, uh, hmm. I guess maybe be quiet. <laughs> That's about the best way. Um, Mickey and I are both very dominant, mm -hmm. control kind of people. So now we're trying to find out. I guess when we were married and he was coaching, we didn't have time to argue a lot. Uh, I remember one time we were doing something such as this, except they were just taking pictures of us. And during that time, I used it to ask him questions about some financial stuff <laughs> we needed to do because you didn't have time to talk. Yeah. And uh, we had said many times, our son used to say, he was going to write a book and he was going to, the title of it was going to be Meetings because every time we needed Mickey, he was in a meeting. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's very hard. Um, I think our faith, you know, we both were raised in a Baptist church. We have the same background as far as our faith and uh, commitment. Mm -hmm. You just have to have those things or you cannot do it. Uh, because right now it's very hard. Mm -hmm. Too Younger women are having a really tough time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Mickey said to me right before he retired, he said, I can only do one thing at a time. And when he did football, that's what he could do. Mm -hmm. He was that focused when he says he couldn't stand mistakes. He's a perfectionist. And, um, you know, when you have people like Dion, like Derek, and he could see their possibilities. Right. And he couldn't stand not helping them get there. Right. And uh, right now, you know, they've reached that pinnacle. And what's so good about those two guys is when we, Mickey went to visit and took our uh, grandsons to visit Dion for the day out in Dallas one day, what a fun time. And he has grown into an amazing faith-based human being with a wonderful family. He does such good work. Same thing with Derek. I read where Deion Sanders says that he basically thinks about some of the principles taught by Coach Andrews every day in his personal life as he mentors. And yeah. So I, I guess in one way you, you and your family may be sacrificing, but he's given so much to, yeah. to so many others. Yeah. So that must be a great sense That's of pride. That's what you have to look at. Yeah. It really is. But now he's beginning to be able to do some wonderful things. Um, somebody said to me right before Mickey retired, Mickey said, well, I need to spend more time with my grandchildren and with my family. And this one person said to me, how can he put that burden on his grandchildren that he's retiring because of his grandchildren? So I went to our oldest grandson and I said, Dylan, how do you feel about this with Poppy? And he said, well, it just shows us how much he loves us. Yeah. So, you know, um, he's now being able to do those kinds of things, and that's great. You know, he's enjoying it. What was your, if there was one or two things that you took away from this marvelous career that the two of you shared together, what would they be? Hmm. Um, Okay, on one side, I would say, <laughs> we look back and we say five national championships on that side, mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. secular side. Uh, Mickey had two as a player, mm -hmm. 
and we were married for one of those. Uh, then he had one as a head coach, mm -hmm. and then two at Florida State, mm -hmm. and could have had a lot more. Yeah, almost had a lot <laughs> more. Yeah. Very close to a yeah. lot more. Um, on the other side, um, I'd say the wonderful people. Mm -hmm. It's like Mickey said, uh, and and I I talked to our the new staff at Florida State about two weeks ago, the coaches and their wives, and I said to them, uh, cherish this time at Florida State and do what we did, which was a plus. We saw all these wonderful people and we saw them as friends mm -hmm. because in football you can have a lot of acquaintances but you must be careful that you weed out and understand friends so we can come we can go all over the state and have wonderful friends mm -hmm. we have had friends from uh, Seminoles that travel with us and go places with us so the friendships that we have cultivated over this time Mm. You know, that have been with us when we have had tragedy in our family, right. when we've had um, a lot of things, and they're always there. Mm. Just amazing. Things. It's been a real they pleasure do. talking to you, just kind of getting a different look from what people <laughs> ordinarily might, might think of us mm -hmm. in the world of college football. Yeah. Thank you, Diane. Right. I wish Thank you all you. the best. Thank you so much. <laughs> and try to keep that guy straight now that he's retired. It's a job. It's a job. <laughs> I'm up to it. There you go. I, <laughs> I know you are. I know you are. Diane Andrews, Coach Mickey Andrews' wife. Been married almost 50 years, so she knows a little something. Uh, she's extremely patient and dedicated, right? <laughs> <laughs> we thank you so very much for watching this broadcast. By the way, you can check us out on Facebook. Just search out Conversations with Jeff Weeks. We'd love to have some of your input. Thank you so much for watching. Take very good care of yourself, and we'll see you soon. Support for this program is provided in part by these corporate sponsors. And by viewers like you. I'm Jeff Weeks and I love to talk, but I find I learn a lot more when I listen. I hope you'll listen in on the next conversations. We talk with engaging personalities from all walks of life. Sports, business, politics, science, entertainment, literature, you name it. Some are names you know, others are ones you'll be glad to get to know. No talking points or agenda-driven tirades. It's real conversation that matters. Conversations with Jeff Weeks, Thursday at 7.30 and Friday at 9.